Hello and welcome back to another episode of Diaries of Death. My name is Heiken and today we're continuing the Diaries of Death in World of Warcraft Hardcore where I am playing a Frost Mage and trying to not die because elsewise the character is gone. Anyways, last time we were in Black Fathom Depth and today we're having a bit of a chore type of uh, episode. But it won't be bad because I will fast forward a lot of it. So 30 is an interesting or 29 is an interesting kind of leveling area because at uh, one point you are almost too high for certain areas but then uh, you are too low because uh, a lot of uh, the quests, uh, higher quests in the respective areas are kind of out leveling you and I just spent a little bit of time uh, whilst getting ready for the recording uh, to fight against turtles for instance uh, that are two levels above me i can tell you i uh, legitimately received 30 to 40 percent uh, resists on my spells so it's just a very painful way of playing the game therefore what we're going to do is we're instead going to grab a couple of uh, uh, quests uh, locations and are essentially finishing a few quests. So uh, we're starting with the hill uh, Brett's foothills. We have uh, done off screen a few quests in this area, just mainly uh, bears and uh, mountain lion killing. Nothing that is exciting enough to uh, put it into the video. Um, but we're now in the hills bread area where you can see this big fat rod, uh, red dot uh, which indicates that uh, there are quite a few people dying in this area and the reason is quite simple there are a lot of monsters or uh, humans in this case uh, in this area and you got to be careful when approaching them so our quest today is the elixir of pain which we will need to deliver here and then uh, killing of uh, the Magistrat, who is uh, literally the boss of that entire place and is sitting in the main hall, which, spoiler alert, is quite heavily guarded. So, we're going to start, as always, uh, in hardcore, you're clearing the area. There is no, I'm going to sneak in, it's going to be fine. <gasps> The answer is no, it's not going to be fine. I should say we got a new wand, uh, which was one of the rewards from the Black Fat and Depth quests, the Gravestone Scepter. And this uh, bad boy is absolutely fire. Very high DPS, uh, appreciated. So, let's start with the elixir here. Feeding it to the dog, and the dog turns into a massive enraged beast. Cool. So <clears throat> that uh, solved uh, the quest and now it's time for the Magistrat. Got to kill a couple of councilmen and uh, work our way to the Magistrat. Who is in that main building? I already did a few pre-quests for that uh, full uh, disclosure. So you need to kill quite a few uh, people here. Did that uh, whilst preparing for the Black Fathom Depth uh, group and whilst kind of getting uh, them together. Um, again, not interesting enough to show all of that. I figured I'll just start today's episode with the final quote-unquote quest, which is also the hardest part of the entire quest line. So we got to be careful here. This quest is no joke. <clears throat> We're going to see quite a few double and even triple pulls. Oh, 
clever. And there is another one just walking up. Citizen Wilkes. Is he going to add? No, he's not. He's just seeing his comrade die right there. And is minding his own business. He's a civilian. What can we say? Just getting all of the patrols out of the way. That in itself is already a task. But like I mentioned, you want to be safe and not have too many roaming enemies because that typically leads to problems. These are the council members. Gotta kill five of them. As casters, they don't have a lot of hit points, which is great. And this is the main hall where kind of the magic is going to happen. Good, couple of councilmen on the outside. Uh, when I, whenever I go into a building, I tend to clear left and right of the entrance, simply because when you get out and have aggro of enemies, that is where most of uh, the immediate ads are happening. So this guy and this guy definitely need, need to die. The inside is a bit uh, more iffy and we're on an indirect timer and what I mean with that is the respawn here will happen at some point, meaning we want to be mindful of the timing when that happens. The building itself, however, is good. It has a lot of abilities to just avoid casters because you can line of sight them. a bit the challenge the moment that someone is getting away you're having a hard time catching uh, up with them you can easily pull something all right so now time for the main building that's a single pull but every follow-up pull will be doubles or triples and it's important to pull these guys out because you're effectively ending up um, seeing them run back in there is the respawn I talked about good timing now to make sure that you don't have to deal with it Good. The moment that something is respawning there, we need to immediately uh, take care of it. Good. One way of pulling this is simply using the sheep technique. All right. No aggro. It's just a single pull. If someone would have been in the close proximity, 
That's not good. How many? Just one more. Okay. Yes, shield bash. I don't want to be shield bashed in frost. <clears throat> so we're just wanting him to death. We're doing it even safer and looking at the outside, using our camera to see anything that is happening here. Okay, single pull. <coughs> I've used my frost uh, ward instead of counterspelling him because by walking through here he could have pulled something else. a good pull. Not a good pull. We used cold snap for that. I could have uh, fought it out and used uh, my dust, but point being <clears throat> It would have introduced too much uh, risk that I wasn't willing to take. So we're just going to quickly clear and come back. I'll fast forward the re-clearing. Okay, timers are a bit messed up, so let's be careful here. There might be a respawn, an imminent respawn right there. Okay, that could have been a uh, good pull. Nope, that is a horrible pull. Let's retry that. Uh, the original way. It's a triplet at least. Good, there is the respawn I was hoping for. Which now puts us into a good position because I can clear that and from there on pull the others. Okay, let's do that. Good, we're ready. Let's do this. A little bit of line of sight. Keep him there. Heavily slowed. So that was a doublet. I can do a triplet uh, now. I just need the right pull. And it's better be safe than sorry. And uh, with game experience also comes the experience when things are not working like exactly as you've planned. I do have a lot of cooldowns, but why would I uh, even risk running them if I could just reset the pull? Oh. 
Good. This is where we are going to unload. And this is how the triplet should look. Not used to seeing a cooldown, not even my mana gem. Still had plenty of uh, juice left in me, but I didn't need it. Magistrat, the end boss of all of this here. Let's go. <laughs> Fabulous. Good. Problem solved. We're through with uh, all of that. Uh, so it is time to hand in quests. And uh, we will do a little bit uh, more chores now. Fast forwarding for you guys. Alrighty, so we're coming into another shore area. We have successfully level to level 30. And Gotta be really careful here. Uh, don't want to trigger that Ashen Veil vale sentry. Uh, so we have successfully leveled to level 30. Uh, the job now. Yeah, I need to take a different route. Um, the job now is to clean up Ashen Veil vale and then afterwards go to a follow up zone. And really two quests, uh, one is the Shredder Operating Manual, which we're doing now, um, maybe combined with uh, Waters of Xavier, and the other one is Ordainus. And Ordainus is a bit of a uh, wild card. It's one of the more difficult quests that I want to challenge myself. Let's see if we can do it. Ordainus essentially, ooh, ouch. Ordainus essentially comes in uh, with two adds and both of these adds uh, can summon three additional uh, tree ends and all of that is happening on a tree house so that whenever you mess up you're really really uh, having a hard time escape and that is why you see this huge massive red dot there stored in a uh, quest line so we're going to try to be sensible in soloing it and getting up there let's start uh, clearing it we do have slow fall so we're actually fine inside uh, of uh, that building are fairy dragons uh, so if you accidentally like use a nova uh, that unfortunately can lead to your untimely demise as well simply because they are normally not aggressive but if you hit them they are all of a sudden become aggressive and uh, that can hurt like a lot here they are blink dragons and they come in pairs of three so yeah uh, gotta be careful and this here is still uh, the easy peasy part the 
more difficult one is going to start soon. We got new water, by the way, which is fantastic. Finally, quicker drinking. Yeah, this is one of those situations where your instincts tell you to frost Nova. That's not what you should do. You should just sit it out, let him hit you a little bit, doesn't matter. And then continue moving up. Very easy, by the way, to fall down uh, and die by doing that. Uh, we're going to use a short-term buff. And these guys in here, they are the real pain. The uh, Scenario and Vindicator. Because they do have Force of Nature, which allows them to summon three Forces of Nature. Orenos uh, can unfortunately root. So what we're going to do is going to go in with a little bit of crowd control here. Bursting him down, and uh, then it is. See ya, boys. <laughs> Lame? Yeah, certainly. Effective? Yep, definitely. We we'll use one of our slumber dust, so. I hope that we're going to get uh, the formula for them soon. They are super useful. Incredibly good to have a second crowd control. And there we go. Uh, that's how you do his quest. And with his uh, head, we got yet another quest completed. Need to get that back to school rock retreat but we can do that not a problem all right uh now i will grind the last manual page i will use the set uh, setters up here move over and then go there uh that way i should be able to find it hopefully all right setters are straightforward but they are typically strong for their level however we are a bit over leveled here and really the only thing that i want is the manual page a little bit of xp at the side uh, the advantage of uh, so the disadvantage of them first is they can silence uh, which makes it uncomfortable as a caster the advantage though is they don't have a lot of hit points for mobs of their level so as you can see you can get them down relatively uh, quickly. Yeah, and the only thing that I need to do is pull one at a time, go th uh, through them, and then move to the higher level where we can uh, get uh, the water sample. So that'll happen in a, uh, in a second. Good. I'll for fast forward that process for you guys. All right, short update. We made our way all the way here. Of course, the shredder manual didn't drop. Like I said, it's a bit of a trap, but I don't mind grinding. And at some point it'll eventually drop. And if it doesn't, uh, it's still fine. Uh, the satyr, uh, satyrs are actually quite a, a challenging foe, but luckily I'm 30, so things are good here. Gotta be careful, there is an alliance attacked 
uh, humanoid on the ground and even if you attack them you're getting tagged so that would be a problem respawns are real in this uh, area so you gotta be extra careful So yeah, at the moment we're still cruising. I want to get to the water quest, which is just down there. So fast forwarding for you. Good. We cleared out the area, got a named uh, Satyr uh, called Gilharis, as well as Xavier Hell uh, Caller, and uh, that in here is where we need to get the sample from. Oh no, the waterfall is on the other side. Never mind. I always thought it's in here. Well, uh, that makes it way easier and we can go back to farming setters. I just need to get to the, uh, to the waterfall. Easy. All right, continuing with our uh, chores. So I finished Ashen uh, Veil vale more uh, or less. Couldn't get the last page, but that's okay. Uh, there, if you set yourself a limit until when you want to get it, and you then just simply don't get it, then uh, so be it. It's just one quest with a neat reward, but that's all there is. I went into Duskwallow Marsh, which is a higher level area, in uh, 30s actually, um, and got the first aid book there, which allows us to get to 225 first aid. We're now rocking good old uh, silk bandages. That's important because if we ever are in a big problem, then we don't want uh, to have minor bandages so we'll uh, we are going to keep doing that over and over there this year is the whole razor f uh, thing uh, down uh, dungeon which is again end 30s content so uh, not for us at the moment very nice dungeon though we're going to get it and instead what uh, we are going to do is we're going to uh go oh, this one here is a thing crowl actually could be i would need to look it up uh maybe we are at the right time uh for that uh the razor thing downs definitely not but the crowl might be one that uh, we are running we're now going uh, to go to thousand needles uh, which is another great leveling zone uh, by the way, I realized uh, we have made it to level 30, uh, which means we're amongst the top 12% uh, mm, using the 50-50 flips. And this here is an elevator of doom. Luckily, we do have uh, feathers for, um, for snowfall. Good. Let me get to uh, the... Uh, quest center and then we're going to take it from there okay we're starting in a thousand needles so we got a couple of quests number one pacify the centaur up here and there's uh, kind of uh, the assassination plot on top of it we got the alien egg which we can get uh, or continue literally everywhere and then uh, we got high pitched Viverin X plus home uh, ward bond. This one here is difficult. If I remember correctly, that is a harpy cave and a pretty notorious one, at least when I used to play. So we got to be a bit careful when it comes to that. All right, moving to the first quest, <clears throat> and uh, let's go. This is essentially where we will need to fight a couple of centaurs, uh, the higher level version of the guys in uh, the Barrens. 
And if we play it uh, nice and calm, we should be fine. 12, uh, what do we have? 12 uh, scouts, wind chasers, wranglers. All right, should be fine. So let's go. With the new, <coughs> or with the newly added uh, ice block on level 30, we have a little bit more uh, safety, but the way that I'm seeing it is if you're, if you're feeling tempted to push the limits, then it's just a matter of time until you are going to die. Here's, here's the deal. If you do have a 1% chance, a 0-1% chance even of dying in a pull, then that means on average it takes you a thousand pulls to die with your character and that's just a mentality that i think you need to develop when uh, playing on hardcore talking like i've done this 10 times which is not the case uh, matter of fact i have not but i've played the game enough to know what limits look like and uh, not how how to not tempt it this year the test of faith is a funny quest you're jumping off a cliff but it used to be bugged sometimes you were just falling on the ground and uh, are going to be dying it's not going to happen for uh, to us because we're not going to do this quest We are instead just moving through the centaur camp, like a boss. Good, trying to get like a good split of enemies. That way we don't need to farm specific enemies at some point. I think uh, though we should be fine by just going through the centaur camp. Good. I tend to like to clear the edges of those camps simply because you have an escape plan and less enemies can add. Given that this here is pretty much straightforward, I am considering to fast forward it uh, after a few more pulls. Because as much as I enjoy stomping on the centaurs, I can get repetitive. Alright, fast forwarding for you. Good, so now that we've cleared all of the centaurs in the north, uh, we skipped uh, the uh, test of faith, I think. Free at last we could get... Yeah, but that could be a follow-up quest because I think the follow-up quest of the centaurs was water elementals, if I'm not grossly mistaken. But can do that in the next uh, round. I just want to do the first round of quests. Um, Next up, we're taking the alien egg here and are then moving to the wyverns next. So, that's one less uh, problem for us. Got a couple of nice uh, trade-ins right there. And now we're going to go to uh, the cave up here, high perch uh, wyvern axe. 
All right, fast forwarding for you. I was wrong, by the way. This year is the notorious uh, cavern of screeching harpies. We don't even have a quest for that. I think it's an alliance quest uh, or a follow up quest. So, yeah, we're going to go there maybe ish, but not yet. Our time has not come to take that challenge. Instead, we're going to go for the Viverns. Gotta be careful, there are still uh, elite. Uh, elites roaming through here, in this case an elite elemental. And like I said, I'm always marking them, so that way there is no accidental aggro. Move nicely out of the way. Okay, plan is we're going to go through that little corridor and are going to work our way upwards. Here we are at the entrance and whenever you are questing kind of at an elevated location and you don't have uh, snowfall, you gotta appreciate that this year is just as bad as fighting inside of a cave because uh, mobs don't have a big problem uh, they can't take fall damage and they are basically just like gliding down uh, but you will need uh, to evade and not uh, in order to not take fall damage so per definition you have a longer escape route than they do and oftentimes the fall itself is deadly or you're finding yourself in a situation that you either will take fall damage or uh, be killed by the enemies so that's really what it boils down to uh, we're going to clear out a couple of the viverns uh, the main reason why we're here are these eggs because we need to poach them and then we're making our way tendentially to the left uh, over here As you can see, they are not very fast and actually quite perfect uh, targets for us to kill. No special abilities. All right, let's do a couple of eggs and work our way to the left hand side. of uh, these in order to complete the quest so that's going to take a while and given that there are a lot of viverns around uh, that's kind of uh, the anticipated grind uh, that the developers have accounted for by the way also the reason why I never shy away from just killing a few enemies here and there it is just very time efficient if you're anyways traveling and there is something on the way that you need to kill uh, for experience then sure go ahead if it is easy enough to kill okay so may one or two more pulls whilst we're poaching the eggs and we're making our way towards the left hand side and then we're fast forwarding. The only thing that these guys have going for themselves is the poison. And unless I'm misremembering, there wasn't even a major river in here. So, pretty straightforward just hunt and kill and 
And yeah, in these open regions, of course, I could now sneak in and uh, get the egg. But here's the thing. I could also just kill the wyvern. It's perfect uh, from a leveling uh, perspective. Exactly two levels below me, which means full experience, no experience penalty. Uh, but easy to kill. All right, I'll fast forward a little bit unless something interesting happens. All right, we finished the AK collection and are now at the last quest, which is finally enough another escort quest. Oops, that was wrong. A little bit low on water, but we should be fine. And since it's an escort quest, let's eat some buff food. Those 40 year shit points can be the difference between life and death. After this quest, uh, we're going to hand everything in. And are likely going to even reach level 31, which would be fantastic. Then a few more quests here. And definitely a few more quests there um, on the racing track. Good, that's the advantage of pre-clearing. Just need to make sure that there are no ambushes during the quest. I don't know it from the bottom of my, uh, the top of my head, but I think we should be fine. Very good. Almost full mana. We cleared it all of uh, the way. That would be way more nasty if uh, the Viverns would still be there. However, we're now coming into kind of respawn because as you can see, this here is no longer cleared and these guys are going to respawn. He's going to walk straight through here. So we might see a few more fights. All right, come on, old man. Pauka Swift mountain you're the opposite of a swift mountain yeah and we see a spawn right behind us drawing them over here mainly to isolate uh, uh, these guys it's the swift mountain it's unfortunately already at half health Good, we marched nicely right into that respawn, by the way. Nice little human rogue. All 
right, nasty respawns. But yeah, good for us. The rogue did his job. And the, those triple respawns never really were a problem. All these triple ambushers. Because uh, good old uh, Pauka, for the first time in his career, was actually a swift mountaineer. And walked by two of them. And apparently didn't we didn't leash uh, the others. So that was cool. Easy peasy. And I think that will leave us even with four quests uh, to trade in, which is good. Uh, about 5% per quest, so we should be give and take at level 31. In terms of next skill, I think I'm going for Ice Shards, Critical Strike, Damage Bonus, uh, mm, up to plus hundred percent which is pretty awesome improved frostbolt uh rank five wouldn't be bad either just getting that cast time down ah potentially i'll do that first Alright, are you finally done, old man? These guys have a nasty disease that I don't want to catch. Additional physical damage and stat reduction. Good. Fantastic. Let's trade in our quest. So, let's see. Am I going to make it? Ah, that's potentially just barely not enough. that heavy armor kit I like it uh, I think we're going to put that on the ropes of Arogal don't think that I'll get something equally good soonish and the other one I'll save anyways need to go to here so that would be the last quest trade in but uh, we are looking good uh, just need the secret notes next so that's a follow-up quest um, I'm pretty sure the elementals would be one as well and yeah we're going to go here first because I think this is where we get the elemental quests and then we're doing the elementals plus the secret notes so that will be uh, the next round that we're doing uh, and that would be another three or four quests before we're then uh, moving to the Salt Flats with 31. Alright, so we're continuing our little quest a marathon through Thousand Needles. Uh, got a couple of transition quests and that dings us to level 31 finally. Very nice. Uh, plus got a new quest over here so we need the gizmo uh, but that's a group quest so we're likely not going to do that let's take that one out and let's take the gizmo out no need to go for group quests um, yeah we got quite a bit up here 
So you can see there are bridges in between many of the upper layers. So we need to get up there and fight. We also need to uh, get the sacred, fi uh, sacred fire going. There are elementals down here and we have a wanted poster up there, which we're also doing, plus the upstairs quest. So quite a bit. Uh, before we're joining though, we are now ready to get uh, improved Frostboard rank five. That'll give us casting speed advantage. So we're good. Uh, next up, I think we're going for ice shards. I like higher crits, but I also like permafrost quite a lot. Uh, but I think we're going for ice shards and then a few points into shatter so that we're really going to uh, crit often and very hard. So uh, let's start by not only getting up uh, there. So the entrance is right here to get up there and you can see it's the most deadly zone by quite a margin. But before we go up there, we're actually going to do the quest on the ground against uh, the elementals. We are nicely buffed. We got everything ready for us. Might as well kind of uh, rebuff. And to everybody's, I assume, massive excitement, we're fighting against uh, elementals that are immune to frost. So, yeah, great. It's called Boiling Elemental, but let's be honest, uh, we all know they are immune to frost, so there is nothing boiling about them. Wonderful. Got a nice little cat that aggroed here, which I would like to take care of first. Could have sheeped the cat and just done it that way, but I don't like the idea that someone is waiting. Anyways, yeah, those will become more common. We got a surprise attack. And that is on top of it stunning. Yeah, not great. Anyways, as you can see, boiling elementals very much yet again immune to our most um, profound damage source. So what we will need to do, and they do have high resistances, holy shit. What we basically need to do is grind them down. Can't really slow them much. Oh, they are resistant. Holy. I might need to go for Arcane here. Hate to say it, but that is not a great damage profile for us. Problem with Arcane is we really just have one damage uh, spell and that one isn't even really great. Because we're taking interruption damage. Okay, at least the damage gets uh, through and I'm wondering To be honest, even if we're losing channeling time, this might be more efficient. If you think about it, because uh, we're, we get like a, quite often a massive resist on the fire side, and the net dam uh, net net damage isn't that great. All right, I'll fast forward this. Uh, monstrosity of a quest for us uh, rip just another shaman has died just want to showcase that really quickly and I found a rhythm that I will show you I think I know how to deal with them now okay let me show you how I am dealing with them now by the way uh, 
I've just mouse over uh, the bigger version of uh, these guys. Can't show you uh, th uh, the one, but uh, they are basically higher level versions of them. I just killed one. Um, uh, right back here, the Scalding Elemental. And you can see it's number one deadliest in the thousand needles, which kind of indicates that these guys are not fucking around. Uh, they are having high resistances, deal a good amount of damage, great movement on top of it. So, yeah, I can see why people are having problems with them. They are no fun to uh, work with, but uh, you can see that uh, magic missiles or arcane missiles are doing the trick. In between, I'm fire blasting. From time to time or putting a wand uh, back in so show you the rotation again uh, that at least uh, works uh, reasonably well so uh, you can see with the fireball i use that uh, for the dot as an opener but you can see it deal, uh, dealt 27 points of damage as the majority had been resisted so we're really better off just uh, using arcane missiles kind of doing that <clears throat> and yet another druid died oh my lord it's a deadly weekday today apparently. holy moly okay so we're done with this horrible quest and i start to get a better picture why these guys are all so deadly because uh, the problem is uh, the quests upstairs uh, does not allow people to jump down so they falsely assume if they can jump into the water they'll be fine Landing nicely in the hands of these elementals that are then uh, simply consuming them. So I get a better uh, feel for how how the death economy here must be working. Very good. Our next uh, stop is going to be up here, Arnak, uh, Arnak's Hoof, and maybe we get free at uh, last. Uh, I think, however, uh, that is all the way up there. By just realizing my mistake, uh, which means we need to get up here and do the quests on top. Let's go. Time for us to ascend, uh, and we're going to fight against these Grim Totem uh, enemies which I vaguely remember have a lot of shaman-like abilities. It says Earth Shock and Co. So yeah, they can be quite annoying, but we should be fine. We're high level enough to deal with multiples of these. Plus they are humanoids, so that means we can shoot them. And crowd control also means uh, always means you're a little bit safer. I'll keep uh, my hand hovering around the slow fall key, which we might need. So this is easy, easily to uh, to uh, to jump off if you're not paying attention or have someone on follow or whatnot. So we got to be careful and we have a lot to do up here for starters we got to find secret notes had they been hiding in here no i think it might be up there yeah, we're still on our ascent, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, it was on uh, on that very hill. Okay, good. So yeah, falling down here is instant death. Uh, luckily, I do, or the mage does have three ways of preventing that, ice block, blink, and of course, Slow fall. All right, 
found a rare uh, one, Harp Foul Mountain. And in the true spirit of a rare enemy, he comes in with a couple of special abilities, this time War Stomp and Thrash. Doesn't help him. And we got Superior Braces of Spirit. Oh, this is a shitty pull. I don't like it, but that might be a single pull. And then we can finally get on top of that ridge. Good. This is a tough one because it could be a triplet. I waited uh, because had I cast earlier then it would have been a triplet. This way it's just a doublet. And if we play our cards right, <clears throat> the reinforcements shouldn't be a problem. Frost too strong. Can't even touch us. You can see the wandering patrols definitely are becoming an issue. <clears throat> And if you were at lower level, all of this uh, wouldn't have been as easy peasy. Yeah, I can see why people are jumping down and then in the Hail Mary maneuver they are trying to jump down there. Which really is where all of the red is happening. Ouch. Okay, so we're taking the left-hand side first, which is where the Free at Last uh, quest and the Wanted poster is leading us. <clears throat> That's also where Anna Grint Totem is. Just need to make sure that we're not pulling him, that would suck. Good, there he is, Arna Grimtotem in all of his glory. Let's go, we're using a sheep pull. Should pull Arnak. Doesn't do that, which is fine. couple of additional uh, pulls here. Arnold get, goes for the uh, goes into the sheep. That guy do, doesn't get a single uh, fireball through, and now it's Arnock's time to meet his maker. But Arnog is definitely no coward, he wasn't running away. We're going to clear the last reaver and then let's see if uh, Lakota Windsong is a good influence for us. We have cleared most of the way, so like, uh, like you always uh, already know with uh, escort quests, you're on a timer with the respawns.
Good, we're using stat food. So we've got 10 minutes on our other buffs, so we should be fine. There's increased stat food, and let's go. Lakota's level 30, so she will have a very similar aggro radius compared to us. I think we need to escort her to the entrance. I don't know though where exactly her ambushes are going to happen. Likely not on a bridge. Because uh, that would be difficult to code. Uh, so I would be assuming they're going to happen on these little islands. In order to not pull all three of them, I'm actually letting him hit me over here. Good, let's hope she's not stupid and isn't directly running into them. Could happen. Oh yeah, it will happen. Of course she's stupid. Be my guest. Just run away from the uh, from uh, the problems. That's how it's done. Now that was, of course, the worst possible spot where anyone could uh, have an ambush. I will let her run into the... Oh, that sucks. At least she's tanking like a boss. Good, we're drinking through that. It's just a single shaman. On the flip side, we've re-cleared the area, so that is fine. That was like two, four, six enemies. Nasty.
And I bet you there's another wave of ambushers just ahead of us. And in order to soften the blow a little bit, guess what I'm going to do? Okay, this is going to be a bit more ugly. Okay, well, cooldowns had been used. Continuous pulse of seven is... Ouch. Odd uh, is quite a bit of uh, enemy firepower there. But she's tanking them well, so I can leave, uh, let's say, two with her for a short moment of time or brief uh, period. I think we're almost done. Need to rebuff anyways. Good. See, that's why I don't like escort quests. They always uh, cause trouble. I mean, you get a lot of experience, to be fair, because you need to kill a lot of enemies. But boy, that... Fighting seven of them... That's rough. There might be one last uh, fight down here. Maybe, might be through it, I don't know yet. If I would have cleared uh, the tops a little bit faster, then we likely would have made it uh, in just one uh, go. But the problem is really the respawns. Plus the enemies that are already on the top. Good. I'll get the other three secret notes off screen. Uh, this here should be done by now. As she's going to find her, her way home. So we got the wanted, we got her. Uh, we definitely uh, got uh, the elementals, so that should be good as well. Yeah, here we go. 
Fantastic. Very good. Let me do the rest of the qu uh, quest up there and fast forward it. Okay, we're going to trade in the remaining quests that I think I'm going to call it a day for the epi for the episode today. Uh, we had been very, very successful overall with quite a lot of uh, action. Questing in a thousand needles is fun. I think next episode we're going to continue uh, the quests uh, in the area plus are going to look for an instance run. Maybe we can do Gnome, Regan or Razorfang Kral. I will need to see if you're comfortable with either of them. Anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it as always and have a good day. Take care. Bye bye.